at this stage of her career, she doesn't have the same amount of number one hits as the mummers and the poppers, but Harness Racing's Michelle Phillips is certainly building up a very impressive record and in a short space of time. I caught up with Michelle prior to uh, moving up the East Coast for a campaign in Queensland. Well, Michelle, great to catch up with you. As I mentioned, heading to the Sunshine State, which no doubt is going to be a lot warmer than here, but the move from Victoria now to New South Wales, how did that come about, first of all? Um, well, I've always always been in contact with Ricky. He's uh, quite often sent Tough Monarch to Victoria, um, and he sent it to my past employer, Chris Sfinozio. So I was able to meet Ricky through Tough Monarch, and I was able to be a part of Tough's monarchs campaign down in melbourne so that's how i've kept in touch with ricky and i was up in the sunshine coast last year for the carnival and yeah he rang me a couple of weeks ago and said hey what are you doing for the carnival i need somebody and yeah so i jumped at the chance i think he knew someone michelle because he loves getting out fishing when he goes to queensland yeah well i won't be joining him on the boats i'm not a fan of fishing so i'll be happy to stay with the horses Michelle, your introduction into harness racing didn't come the usual way via family members, but you were involved with pony clubs. Yeah, absolutely. I was a show jumper and eventer and did pony club, and one of my first horses was actually a, an ex standard bred trotter. So he taught me a lot, and he was probably the kickstart to wondering what harness racing was. The early stages of your teenage years, you weren't sure exactly where you were going to go as far as a career. 2016, that all changed. Yeah, um, so during the year, I think I was in year 10, um, I wasn't very academic, I was more sport, sport inclined and I hated school so I did a TAFE course which was at the Warrigal Gippsland Harness Racing Centre and part of the course was we had to attend um, horses at trials and races and um, I was fortunate enough to be introduced to Debbie and Gary Quinlan and from then it's just skyrock skyrocketed. And what sports were you interested in? Um, I was a heavy basketballer and uh, AFL player. AFL? Yes. <laughs> and there was no thoughts of going down the uh, path as playing AFL? Uh, there actually was. I had a few uh, recruiters looking at me, but in the end I ended up with too many injuries and my body couldn't handle it. You mentioned Gary Quinlan, very astute trainer, but then the path led to Andy and Kate Gath. Yeah, absolutely. So I did a multiple uh, stints at various harness racing trainers. I even did a stint over in New Zealand with Mark and Natalie Purden. And one of my last um, stable mentorships was with Kate and Andy, and they offered me a full-time job after that, so I jumped at the chance. You also many some times with Chris and uh, Alison Alford. Yeah, so they were my first uh, placement that I went to and kick-started off my internship for the year, so that was great. The career started to take off in 2022 when you linked up with a horse by the name of Seb's Choice. Yeah, absolutely. He's been he's my all-time favourite horse and I forever love that horse. And yeah, we went on a memorable ride together. Trained by John Nicholson, the Warrigal Cup, special on so many levels when you won that particular race. Why? It was absolutely phenomenal because that Warrigal is my home track and my whole friends and family were there to see me and all the people that have supported me through my journey and my career from where I started to where I am now and it was just phenomenal to be able to do it on home turf and be on one of the my most, most favourite horse ever. As far as Sip's choice is concerned you, you treat him as not only a wonderful horse but a good mate and also your therapist. Yeah, absolutely. He's been there through the, some of the rockiest parts of my life and there's just something about them. They not don't necessarily talk back, but they show emotion in other ways and him and I, we had a, have an incredible bond and I'm forever grateful for it. Well, you mentioned you're off to uh, Queensland and of course in June of last year, during the Queensland Carnival, you win the Redcliffe Cup once again with Seb's Choice. Yeah, no, that was... That's a lifetime memory that'll last forever. Um, and again, I can't thank the family and John enough for entrusting me in a, such a prestigious race. And to achieve that, it's definitely been a milestone in my career. Michelle, you've mentioned some outstanding names in harness racing that you've been learning the trade from. How long have you been now training as far as uh, going out on your own? Uh, probably been training for maybe just over six months, six to eight months. Um, I do a fair few pre-trainers and that for a few other people and I've just got one in full work at the time which she's currently with me at the moment. Um, she'll then proceed to go with me to Queensland and yeah, time will tell. 
Michelle, we've mentioned your success with Seb's Choice, but there's another list of credits. 2019, the Majura program, 10 winners, either trained or driven or both by lady drivers. What a unique situation. Yes, absolutely. We, who, who would have thought that how women have evolved in the sport and we're pres doing absolutely so well. So, yeah. 2020, you have your first treble and you were wearing the team colours, team teal colours, and that was very important. Absolutely. Um, I have a few friends and family that um, have ovarian cancer and I love these fundraising moments because I get to try my absolute heart out and I know when I win that there's um, support going towards them. So, yeah, it's lovely. There was also a big promotion concerning the International Law Stars, which featured uh, Yenna Gringus and Brett Miller and Corey Callahan, and you were part of that. Yeah, so I was actually not so much their caregiver, but their person that they went to if they needed something. And oh, I had a blast with them, and it was good after the nights we went out. There was always had a blast, so yeah, and I learned a lot. Well, you certainly did because only a couple of months ago you won the Australasian Female Drivers' Championship at Albion Park. Well done on that. Thank you very much. That would have been a wonderful experience and a wonderful little tick as far as you're concerned with your career? Well, it was. I wasn't 100% sure whether I was going to go after I had a fall a week prior and I got knocked around pretty bad, but I got given the all clear and I thought, why not? It's once in a lifetime opportunity. And yeah, I was just happy to just go around and see how I went, but to come out on top, I wouldn't have dreamed that I'd be able to do that. Yeah, he was just the one horse, Kimura Safi, went around last Tuesday, didn't perform up to expectations. We'll begin on Tuesday, and of course that will be one of your travelling companions. A special horse, because 50% of it is owned by your mother as a birthday present from yourself. Yeah, well I kind of forgot it was her birthday, and she came up to visit me, and I was like, oh, it's her birthday, I don't have a present for her. So I quickly printed off the naming forms and gave it to her, but I said don't have very high expectations with her like she's got a lot of problems and yeah she's taken us on a wonderful ride obviously highs and lows as she kind of disgraced herself last start but hopefully this week we're on top of her and she doesn't do that again. Michelle that's a very impressive list of credits that uh, I've mentioned uh, certainly you must be enjoying your time now in harness racing. Yeah I'm having a blast obviously it's the highs and lows of the game but more so highs at the moment and I'd like to keep riding that.